Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Keaton Gologly, and today we get the opportunity to talk with Mitch Canham. He was the manager of the 2017 California League champion Modesto Nuts. He was there in 2018 as well, and now he is the head coach at Oregon State, where he won two national titles as a player. Mitch, how are we doing? <laughs> Keaton, doing, doing really well. Um, beautiful day in the north, and home, watching the kids run around outside, and... Uh, Social distancing tag is is a big game heading around the block right now, uh, but um, getting the school work in with them in the mornings and uh, can't really complain. You know, got getting after what we can right now and staying in touch with all the guys and excited for uh, us as a community and as a as a country uh, and as as a global unity to get through this thing. Well, let's get into the negatives before we get into the positives. First of all, where were you the day baseball shut down? Yeah, uh, we actually had just uh, stepped on the airplane. We were heading out for our uh, uh, start of our Pac-12 conference play. So we're sitting on the plane. The overhead compartments were closing. And I had, uh, I had just jumped on a phone call as well um, with our athletic department. And I was told that everything was shut down. Get off the plane if you can. Save yourself a three-hour flight and a three-hour flight back. So, you know, fortunately, we were able to get off the plane. But, you know, as you're going to talk with all your, your student athletes, you know, you're just trying to seek the answers and, and provide hope of, you know, what we can focus on. I don't want to get stuck in that um, – you know, victimized state of, oh, woe is me or anything. We're all going through this thing together. And, you know, it's immediately the focus was, okay, let's, let's find the positives that we can be focusing on right now. Um, get these guys back home. And if we're allowed to practice, let's practice. And, you know, which we were for a very short period of time. And then, you know, more restrictions came. But, again, it allows us to be um, creative in, in how we go about our work. and it's really allowing us to dig deeper into ourselves um, and what we do with this idle time and how we can use it to uh, grow within ourselves. Sometimes that's on the, the mental game. Sometimes that's, you know, being creative, do, building some uh, stuff at home, doing some workouts. But, you know, from, from that point, definitely, you know, it was a tough conversation to have with uh, the student athletes and a lot of questions, you know, and as they, We'll continue to be there, but um, I'm I'm very happy with how our, our coaching staff and and our student athletes have responded since that time. You know, looking at this from the the pro perspective, you're going to have guys who were draft eligible. They were hoping to get drafted, and, and talking about the guys in the later rounds. You know, the guys in the top rounds are still going to have the opportunity to go that. But with the way the draft is going to be shortened this year. How are you talking to some of those guys who were projected as later round picks, A, about how they're trying to work out, and B, what to do if they don't get drafted but still are good enough to maybe sign a free agent contract and go play pro ball? Yeah, it, it's, it's going to be a case-by-case -case basis. You know, everyone's um, in a different boat in this realm. I think uh, all of our student athletes really respect the, the education piece. And they want to be leaving Oregon State with a degree, uh, something that will help them for the rest of their lives. Uh, so we take the academics very seriously here. Um, but really sitting down, having conversations as we do daily, um, meet with a couple of student athletes every day on Zoom and check in with them and see, you know, what their plan is. But the reality is that whether you're – uh, moving on to professional baseball, are going to stay here at Oregon State. Uh, the the old saying is, "Get better." It does. It doesn't matter the situation that you're in. Get better, right? That daily improvement piece. So, whether a guy is going to line himself up and and be in that top five round uh, section, or he's going to be, you know, probably not picked up and maybe in that free agent realm, just focus on what you can control right now, make the improvements, focus on the body, the sleep, the nutrition, um, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, breathing exercises or hitting the gym hard and you name it, the, the, the little skill pieces, um, put yourself in the best situation when the draft comes around and then let them decide where, where you fit in that. 
if there's still going to be workouts possibly where guys can go out and showcase their talents in front of pro scouts, you know, that can help. You just want to be prepared for it. Um, so wherever we started at the beginning of this, uh, this season or, you know, we should be getting better throughout, throughout this time. It's just a matter of being creative and you can jump on social media and see how a ton of people are being creative and, and making the most out of this time. I think it just gets down to build that schedule and then look at it and say, is this something that's going to help me become elite or is this something that's just passing the time? Well, Nuts fans got to know you when you were a very young head coach or manager in uh, in pro ball and still a young head coach, but you know, going back to those cu- first couple of years in pro ball, cause you walked right off the field as a player into the manager's role in 2016. That's where you met Pete Woodworth. You're with the nuts in uh, 2017, 2018, got a chance at double A before you left for Oregon state. But when you think back to those two years in Modesto, what were some of the areas that you grew the most as a coach, as you were still getting your feet wet? Everywhere. I mean, reality was I was extremely fortunate um, to be surrounded by great human beings, very intelligent, uh, inquisitive, um, patient um, co-workers and that, that really inspired me to bring out, uh, you know, a better version of myself every day. Also not, you know, understanding that I still had a lot to learn. I still do. And I, it will always be that way, but, you know, having Jim Pankovitz, you know, sharing, sharing an office with him, someone who's been around the game for so long and done everything in, in the baseball world uh, as, a, as a player and as a, a coach, you know, every day sitting down with him and pulling out the whiteboard and, and talking about game situations and how he handled it and looking at it through a different lens um, was extremely important. And that was – you know, one of the, the most overall developmental years uh, of, of of my life thus far. Sitting down and, and having the coaching staff that we did and the support from the, the, the Nuts front office there in town, you know, was tremendous. Um, and every time, you know, we're, we have someone coming in from the Mariners, it's someone that you res- respect tremendously, that you know that they're coming in with the best intentions and trying to help you get better. So as much as we're pouring into the, the players and want to help them fulfill their dreams, you know, same thing for us as a coaching staff. I think we all did a really good job of, uh, of having that growth mindset and trying to get better for the organization, for, you know, the, the community in Modesto, for our players there and for one another. So the, the accountability piece uh, was strong early on, understanding that I don't know it all, and I'm 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 going to have the gut to to ask for some help, and have the courage to actually close our mouths and listen when other people are really trying to pour into us. I think that's you know that was a, a huge developmental year for myself and and really all of us. What are some of the things and uh, that you're taking from the pro ranks and implementing in the college ranks? Hmm. Well, I, I do believe that it's, you know, it's, it's the same scenario. You're, you're trying to help people fulfill their dreams. And, um, you know, a lot of the stuff that we did in the Mariners organization, uh, communicating with the players, using the analytics, really trying to bring out the best version of that human being, uh, not only on the field, but off the field, I think it's the same thing. You know, our player development plans that we did in the Mariners organization, that's something that I'm, continuing to do here I saw such huge gains with uh, the professional athletes and getting down and, and understanding clearly what it is they need to do to get to that next level I mean you try to give them the answers to the test and encourage them along the way um, you know same kind of thing here we sit down uh, you know I'd say each student athlete we meet with them once in one of these larger larger meetings of providing direction. What's our plan for the next 30 days? Um, how are we going to stick with it? And why are we doing this? And how is it going to help us? And, you know, making small tweaks along the way. But that was one of the uh, the greatest things I thought we did because it really lifted up the athlete and showed them how much we all cared, the prep that goes into those kind of things. 
and it also holds them and us accountable. When we're going out there to work on the field. Hey, we just got done talking about these three things that we're working on. You know, let's make sure we're staying focused for this because that's all part of this plan. You said you wanted it. We're here to help you. Let's move the needle forward. Um, so it just created a better environment for, for accountability. Uh, and not only that, but in the Mariners organization, um, the support we had from um, our, our scouting department and our analytics department coming in and teaching us a lot. Anytime we had questions, uh, what the data meant or how to use it or how to evaluate, we can use that same kind of stuff uh, here in college and, and help our guys make themselves better. You're having more truthful conversations with them. So a lot of it's just building our knowledge base, being able to communicate it, and then holding each other accountable to it. Now you talk a lot about, you know, watching guys realize their dreams. We're going to talk about that a ton because a bunch of the guys from the 17 team did that. Uh, but for you, can you tell me about just some of the emotion you were experiencing that week when Oregon State's job opens up, you go through the process, you end up getting it, and then you have to leave that double-A clubhouse? Oof. Whirlwind <laughs> of emotions right there. Um, you know, obviously when packing, packing my bags up there and saying goodbye to everyone um, at that time, you know, when they're, they're out there competing and still after leaving, watching a lot of those guys uh, get up to the big leagues and, you know, the excitement that you have for them. I mean, for a lot of those guys, we spent not just the half season together, but we spent the last, you know, three and a half years together for a vast majority of the year, but really in the off season, we communicated quite a bit as well. And you, you could feel that, that, that bond, that, that family that was built on that side, but, you know, and the support, not only that they all had for me pursuing um, my dream of getting back here at Oregon State. I mean, this this university transformed me um, in a tough time in my life when having moved on from high school and, and going through some, some uh, family stuff. It was, it was the people in this community that helped transform me into the man I am today and that really pushed me so that I could go on and play professional baseball so that I would find, um, you know, the, the, the part of me that loved coaching as well and uh, helped me become a better man for, you know, my, my wife and kids and, and, and trying to do the, the work that God has sent me here to do. But that, that moment of, of getting, getting this job and going through the, the interview process and preparing, not knowing. I mean, as you sit there, my wife and I would sit there and I go, what about this? And, and if this happens, what does this mean? But we both knew like, you know, that how much this, this program, the university meant to us and that we would, we would be home. Like right now, kids are outside running around. My, I, I hid the suitcases. I put them all away. There's no more. There's no more bringing the suitcase out once a week and packing it, and unpacking it, or why even unpack it in the first place? Just leave it all in there. But um, this is the longest we've ever lived somewhere, lived in one place um, since you know we left left college. And it's home. It, it has a wonderful community of people that support us and. You know, at the end of the day, we get to help transform people to bring out the better version of themselves, which is what happened when I was here. And I just want to repay that favor. But, uh, you know, still very close relationships with um, a lot of a lot of the people in the Mariners organizations. It's fun following the the athletes that that um, we got to share a clubhouse with. Um, but that the Mariners organization has been, you know, I've been following them since since I was born, you know, and um, just actually had a conversation with uh, Dan the Man and Tony Arnrich. They jumped on a, a little Zoom meeting with our guys too, and still, still just soaking up the the wisdom that that guys like them have, and how awesome it is that they're willing to take time out of their day and share. So, um, you know. Loved it all over there, but man, just overwhelmed. And and the smile that I have on my face is 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 pretty consistent. Um, 
you know, from my time at the Mariners to being here at Oregon State. Well, one of those athletes that you got to watch succeed last year was Reggie McLean. That's somebody we've talked to through these interviews, got to talk to Pete Woodworth about him a little bit. And one of the things that Reggie pointed out was the conversation you and Pete had with him at the end of the 2018 season. That helped spark the work ethic that he used in the offseason to get himself up to the big leagues by the end of 2019. What do you remember about that end-of-year conversation with Reggie McLean in 2018? Well, uh, he... He's a, he's a special young man, and it was fun to watch him. He, he he did it himself. I mean, he owned up to it, and he took the he took the initiative. You know, what? I'm going to pour into my body. I'm going to devote my time to to eating, sleeping, and, and working out, and make the jump, clear my head, and just and, and be an athlete. And it was it was so fun to just check in on him. Uh, uh, throughout the winter months and hear about how he's going about it. And then to see him show up in spring training, well-prepared, man, it was, it was special. And the confidence that was just pouring off of him because of how much he prepared. But, you know, when we sat in those meetings, uh, Woody was, he was remarkable about getting prepared for these. He wanted to go into that meeting and have every bit of information ready and have clear direction on what needs to be said and that was the the special. I mean, that is the special thing about Woody. He cares so dang much that he went in there and he let him know exactly what was at stake. Right? It's you got to go or it's all over. What do you want? How bad do you really want this thing? And I, th I think you know Reggie really saw the the genuine love uh, that that Woody has for him. And when we went into that meeting, you know, it's that, that's what it was. It was just him pouring out as, as, a, as, a, as a family member saying, I love you so much, man. It's time to make this happen. And, you know, to watch, to watch Reggie, you know, it finally click with him and then go work. I mean, but he did it. He put in the time. And, you know, to see him go up and pitch in the big leagues and, and you know, striking guys out, forcing weak contact, you know, that was special. I still have a, a photo on my phone of him sitting on the couch, you know, when he, when he showed up and he's laid back and I'm going to use it. I'm going to show it to him someday and be like, remember this relaxed guy right here looking all like he just got beat up through the course of a season. What's he going to do? I can't wait to show that to him. And like the before and after of, you know, I mean, you see when he walks into a room because he's, he's got, he's got the shoulders now he's got, you know, the, the neck, the arms, the, the torso. And now it all just kind of went together and to see it click for someone. And he went from driving, uh, you know, for Uber or whatever, or Uber it Eats. Was door, it was DoorDash. Yeah. yeah. DoorDash. That's what it was. And, you know, running around doing that and that, and that, that old school beat up car. And now, um, you know, putting himself in a position that he can better take care of him himself and, and his family and his, his future family you know it's really cool to see and I, I couldn't be happier for him well he was a part of that 2017 uh, California League championship team what are some of your favorite memories from that 2017 season <laughs> we had so much fun <laughs> we, we, we really did showing up to the field and usually in August when stuff starts to wear you down quite a bit and it gets, it's getting hot in the Cali. It is getting really toasty. So you're, you know, we, we were pretty creative with, with how we went about our work, sometimes doing uh, yoga stretches in the clubhouse, pushing it back or having mini competitions. Um, you know, just, it, it was the fun of preparing for the game and going out there and being intense and working hard, but then also having that time to, sit back and enjoy the people around you, uh, clear your head a little bit. I mean, you know, you're at the field so much, and there, there was such a, a great bond with everyone in that clubhouse, whether it was on uh, the bus rides, in the hotels, out eating together. Um, everyone enjoyed being around one another, and it, I think it really allowed for the best version of themselves to come out and compete. You know, they, they wanted the guy next to him to be successful because they had such a strong relationship. Um, and 
us as a coaching staff, we, we razzed each other pretty good, played pranks on each other quite, quite often, um, had a lot of very honest meetings with one another because, you know, we had each expressed our, our, our goals to one another and we wanted each other to hold us accountable. But really, you know, for, especially for uh, Woody and myself, you know, being still very, very young into the coaching world and, 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 and thirst as well, being, being new to the, the coaching world, you know, we had, uh, an amazing man and, and, and Panky there to to help push us. And I look back on the, the photos of us like hugging at the end um, and the excitement. I mean, <laughs> there was, there was a lot of goofy stuff happening that year, but tons of, tons of smiles. And that's, that's part of um, that winning culture that you can create. You enjoy being around one another um, and, and you enjoy that, competitive mode and you embrace your role whatever that may be I think the guys all, all did that the guys that were everyday guys or the guys that needed to come off the bench whatever it was everyone embraced their roles and and competed their best it was awesome to see well one of the things that Pete brought up in our conversation that helped keep things light was the Rambo skit you did in Rancho Cucamonga <laughs> <laughs> what do you remember about that what can you share oh I well he brought that up, huh? He had the hat. <laughs> yeah, so I do have a, a little bit of an alter ego that I bust out every now and then. And, um, you know, it lightens the mood, but also a little pump up, a little pump up speech. And, um, you know, so when David Franco comes in town, Frankie loves to be involved in these as well. And we, we definitely have to get props. You know, you want to make sure that the scene is right. So we spend a lot getting the locker room ready on the road. Um, and I'll, I will watch some, some Rambo tape, trying to get a little inspiration in there. But, you know, you could tell this was a, one of those points where um, guys were kind of drifting away from what they were capable of doing. You could tell a little, little frustration with, with performance and uh, length of the season. So we were having a talk one night after the game, hey, we need to get, get something going to – uh, to kick it in gear, to bring them back, bring back the fun element of it, which is an important part of development is having fun. So I got, I got an idea. We're going to bust out Rambo. And so we went to, uh, went to party city, got a whole bunch of hats and tiki torches and you know, face paints and all kinds of stuff, whatever. And so we, we worked out this skit and it's funny, right when I busted out the door, when all those guys were sitting down, I almost ran over Mr. Mr. Mariner. Alvin Davis was coming in, and he is probably just shocked, like, "What is going on right now?" Because I'm coming out, and I got shirt all ripped up, war paint on. And I'm running out there, giving the pump up, and then uh, we reenacted a scene, a little fight scene, where um, Rambo and the Modesto Nuts came out on top, and then we went out and played some real real deal baseball. It was good. <laughs> Well, you got a few minutes last left. Uh, final question for you. You know, Pete Woodworth is in the big leagues now. Now, hasn't had a game yet, but that's coming. Where were you when he called you or when you found out that, that Woody was going to the show? Man, um, this was back here at home. I remember, remember when, I, when I found out about it. I mean, you, you hear, like, you see all the buzz going on on social media and, and what's, what's going to be the, the – the deciding factor, but you know, the one thing that I, I really wanted to do and actually him and, and uh, Caesar Nicholas came and, and visited me up here um, after the season was over, they spent, spent a little bit of time here, which was awesome. Pete brought uh, uh, Shelby out as well. So getting to see, you know, our, 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 our close friends uh, was special. And then I actually got to give him the hug. So at the time when it happened, I was overjoyed for the man and his wife and future kids and the puppies and all that. And I was just, I was over the moon because he's such, he's such an incredible human being. He, he's very knowledgeable. Yes, he may be young, but I'm telling you, like his communication skills and how much he really cares and the time he puts into it, it's it's hard to find people 
like that and I very deserve deserving of it and he's going to do a remarkable so when he finally came into town that's when I got to embrace him and give him the big hug man that you know there's only so there's only so much you can do congratulating someone over the phone but I remember just talking to my wife and just you know sharing our, the excitement uh, that we had for him he's going to be a, an amazing coach for a long time and impact so many people's careers and their their homes um you know and and he and i are gonna <laughs> he and i are gonna stay in touch you know for the rest of our lives it was a it was a strong bond that we built together over the years um and i'm probably one of his biggest fans no doubt well mitch uh, nuts nation is one of your biggest fans now too since you brought that title to him in uh, 2017 so thank you for that thank you for the time thank you for staying safe and uh, you know just stay safe and Hope, uh, hope the family stays good to go. And uh, before you know it, we'll be back out on the diamond. Better believe it. Hey, good to see your face. Absolutely, Mitch. John Thurman Field is the place.